He is one of the best bantamweights on the planet. He's one of the best to ever do it. He recently retired, and we had him take an Uber from Orange County all the way to Calabasas, California. It's TJ Dillashaw on this week's Food Truck Diaries, and I'm feeding him quesadillas. Let's go. Make it big, big, super thick. From my wallet to my check. I don't want it if it's skinny, but I need it if it's thick. Need a thick girl for the thick boy. I need everything I get, super thick boy. You ready? Used to have a model bitch, now I got a thick one. Yeah, I do. Last night went late, yeah, we had a sick one. Got very drunk. Yeah, and I like options. I don't like Mr. The TJ Dillashaw. My dude. What's up, brother? Hanging out. You're no stranger to the Food Truck Diaries. You gotta love it, dude. Come on, eat some good food. Yeah. Talk some shit. Yeah, talk a little <laughs> trash. Yeah. Not too much trash. Maybe we don't go too hard on people. Yeah. Uh, you came out with some big news. Mm. I, I was, the, I, I think going into your fight against Aljamain Sterling, I, I, I did say this. I, I was trying to tell people how it's a comeback story and they should root for you and the, the reasons why and Americans love a, a true comeback story. And I said, I, I have a hunch, and you and I didn't speak about this, I, said, I do have a hunch, if you were to lose this one, I think he's done. Mm. Just because you look at the obstacle, you, you know, that you'd have to get back to and the chances, you know? So you look at your career, so going into this fight, and for those of you who don't know, he announced he retired. Mm. If you live on Mars, <laughs> TJ Dillashaw retired. But um, going into the fight, was that, did you have that already kind of going through your head? Like, all right, if this doesn't go my way, oh, this is it. Uh, not at all, man. It wasn't it wasn't a thought in my head. I mean, I expected to go out there and win. Even with the injury that I had, I had, like, the utmost belief in myself to get the job done. Um, you know, it was a possibility. I mean, I, me and wife had talks, like, you know, I don't know how many are left. You know, it could be my last one. might not be, you yeah. know, win or lose. But I never really had a set thing to retire. And even afterwards, it was like, fuck, no, I ain't retiring. Yeah. You know, um, but I went and uh, had a shoulder surgery four weeks ago, and the doctor just kind of, like... <laughs> had like a raw conversation with me. He's like, hey man, it's, it's time to make a decision. This is your third shoulder surgery in the last three years. You know, your shoulders, a lot of water under the bridge. Um, it's got me like thinking about life and my son and being able to like actually be active with him and swing a golf club with him and just yeah. live life outside of fighting, you know? Yeah, I bet. Uh, it, was a, it was a tough, I mean, still is tough decision, right? I mean, I haven't even announced it to any media outlet. Oh, this is the first time I've talked yeah. about it, so. Um, you know, I wasn't expecting it for it to be released the way it was. You know, I told them like two days, three days before, and then just taken off the roster, and everyone finds out. You yeah, know? once so, the UFC does that, you know, it's off to the races. Yeah, and I didn't know what to expect, so I kind of wanted to do it myself, but I didn't get that chance. You know. So, yeah, you want to you want to share your story and your perspective of it. You know, I, I think what's kind of tough and heartbreaking being your friend is you were compromised in that fight. It's yeah. Not that Aljo didn't do a great job. You know despite you having, you know, uh, one arm. Mm -hmm. But I guess the bummer for me as a fan and a friend of yours is like, yeah, man, he, w he went out his last one and he wasn't a full capacity. Like you, to see, you know, get to the title shot and then you, you know, you have the one shoulder and it's popping out during camp. It's like, ah, man, that, I guess I, I guess I agree with this retirement. Yeah. Not only you know, but for me, it's kind of bittersweet. I mean, it is for me, too. Yeah. You know what I mean? Like, to go out like that, to uh, not actually put a, a true performance together. Because I still believe I'm the best in weight class. I go out there healthy. I get that belt back, and especially against a fight like Aljamain. It was such a great matchup for me, you know? Yep. So, um, hence why I continue to take the fight even though I was injured, you know? Um, and you got some pushback on that, right? And, but you got pushback from not from fighters. You got, I mean, I'm sure some fighters are going to talk this shit, but... You got pushback from media and fans, and it's like, oh, you guys have no clue with yeah. what professional athletes deal with. Like, the injuries, of course, of course, TJ thought he could win, even if his shoulders pop out of camp. It's like, yeah. when people, when I saw people were upset, like, TJ was a refund, I'm like, you guys are idiots. Yeah. Like, you know how many fighters and athletes and NFL players and NBA players you've watched that did pull it off and they had horrible injuries? Yeah. It's like, that's what makes you different than them. I mean, you kind of have to believe that way. You got yeah. to have that mindset. I mean, you got to be a fucking straight sicko to get in there and do what we do. Correct. And if you if you don't, then you're not even making it to the top. And how, how bad was the shoulder going to camp? Well, Man. I guess during camp. So I hurt my shoulder like end of April, beginning of May. As soon as Aljo called me out, I knew the fight. I was getting ready. I mean, 
I knew my shoulder was a little bit messed up because I had some weakness in it. I thought it was a pinched nerve. I got an MRI done like in January because I thought it was something in my neck I could get fixed real quick. But come to find out, I had a torn supraspinatus and infraspinatus in my shoulder. It was just giving me weakness. I figured this out when I was doing rehab on my knee. I was trying to lift weights upper body. Yeah. Um, but it was like, whatever. I've dealt with shoulder injuries for since 2017. and won world titles with it, whatever. You're no stranger to the shoulder Yeah, just, just forget about yeah. it. Bury it down deep. Never talk about it. Yeah. Get a world title back, you know? But um, I'd say end of April, I was just hitting mitts. I had to go hit a big left hook on the bag, and I tweaked my shoulder. And it was, like, bad. Like, I couldn't hit mitts with it. Couldn't really move it. But it, it was... It got better. I went down and got stem cells in Panama. The pain started to go away. I couldn't really fully use it. I didn't have external rotation. I couldn't hold my arm up like this. It would be like outwards, right? It's compromised. I mean, f- far out from the fight. But yeah. only striking. Yeah. It, only, it was only messing with my striking. It wasn't messing with my grappling. And Aljo was the one I was going to fight. So it was like best case scenario. I can grapple like a motherfucker. I just couldn't strike to my yep. fullest. But I was fighting Aljamain Sterling. He's not dangerous on his feet. If I was fighting a guy like Peter Yano, I would maybe second guess it. Yeah. Right? Um, so it was something I was going into. And then. I don't know, it's five weeks, six weeks before the fight. I got super bad MRSA. Still, same thing with the shoulder. The pain went away from stem cells, but uh, it was only affecting my striking. So I was, you know, made right hand combos and kicks, and actually was sparring fucking great. And when you had MRSA, that's a form of staph, staph right? Yeah. So it's horrible staph. I assume you were on antibiotics. I was on like four different antibiotics which trying are to terrible for get rid it's like of it. Achilles heel for cardio. It's awful. Cardio and just muscle development, everything. And so I just like I broke my body down that way, and I was grappling, doing jujitsu, and I dislocated my shoulder for the first time, like five or six weeks out. And it popped back in. It was only out for a couple of seconds, and it popped back in. And so this guy, you know, it'll be all right. And strengthen it up, it'll be fine. But then it just kind of got worse and worse as the time as the fight got closer. Started cutting weight, and I feel like the body just kind of like breaking down and just got loose to where, yeah. to where it actually popped out twice while I was in Abu Dhabi getting ready for the fight. Jesus, and that's when you're training easy. You're just cutting yeah, weight, just like, going through the out. motions. And yeah, I was man. And doing some grappling things with Juan, and I was in a head and arm choke, and he went to go bump me off. And I couldn't even post my arm out. I just, like, dislocated out the back, you know? So, yeah, I mean, it was bad. But, yeah, man, it was bad. Bad. It was bad. But, but you're not going to turn out a title shot. I'm 36 years old. Yep. I go and get surgery. I'm out for a year, you know, and it's like... I know my shoulder's bad, and now I'm going through meeting this doctor, and he's telling me, like, what if I retired and didn't give myself that shot? And the doctor's telling me the same thing. He's like, man, I don't know if this is ever going to be the same. Yep. And then I retire and didn't get my shot, yeah. you know, to where at least, like, I go out there be a fucking hero, just okay, my shoulder, get the knockout, and, yeah. like, Who top of the world. Yeah, especially you anything that happens, especially with your yeah. skill set. I, I, you know, I co-sign that all day. All Appreciate day, it. Any day of the week. You know, yeah, hell yeah. Who says otherwise just doesn't know sports at the highest level i mean i beat yeah. sanhagen which is a lot more dangerous for a fighter on one leg one leg completely blew my knee out and beat him on one leg so right. he, also in the back of my mind's like you know what this is something i just got to deal with i beat um garbrandt twice with dislocated shoulders i was dislocating my shoulders in that fight camp as well too maybe not as bad but same issue now did you know? anyone in camp ever say maybe maybe take it down a notch in the camps like you go hard in the paint you're intensely known for it we had the same coach in leaster bowling He's like, you never seen anybody train harder. Do you think maybe that was kind of, because same thing happened to Cain Velasquez. Mm. It happened to a lot of the AK guys because they, well, they went so hard in the paint during training camps, they're just, their bodies couldn't, you know, carry that level anymore. It was just too much. Yeah. Um, do you think it's that or what do you think it is? I think it's a combination, right? I've just got some bad shoulders to begin with. And then once I had the injury, it was like, you know, how easy can I go and fight for a world title, you yeah, know? Agreed. So I had to spar. And, man, I'm telling you right now, I was sparring so far because, like, because I only had one wing, I had to, like, really figure out what combos I could throw, what angles I could hit, how I'm going to move. And I was, like, so focused on knowing I only had one arm that I was on, I was on point, dude. My right yeah. hand was a fucking laser. And I was doing great. I was, you know, competing with, you know, Cub Swanson, Juan Archuleta, these guys that are Monsters. killers in my weight class. Yeah. And I'm getting the best of them in, the, in training. So you felt so confident going in. You got to. Yeah. You know, yeah. I felt like I had it. Against a guy like Al Jermaine, too, I mean, I feel like his striking – <clears throat> to be honest, you know, he's, it's more embarrassing to, to the striking he's got to be on top. Yeah. You know? But he's strong at what he does. And I, I think for you, too, if you see in the fight, it wasn't something that Aljo threw. You, I, you, I, maybe you kind of kit and you went to go catch yourself on the octagon floor and you went like this and you see, you, just, you can tell you like, I can just tell your face like, ah, oh, shit. <laughs> like you just see it go, goosh. Yeah. And I was like, oh, damn. Maybe yeah. it's the mouth, you know? 40 seconds in the, in the fight. And I, man, I, and I, and I game plan this out too. 
Should have been a little bit better at it, but uh, I shouldn't have been throwing kicks so soon. He caught, a, he caught a push kick, which I was aiming down the middle. This is going to deter him from shooting shots. I saw Pedro Munoz hit him with a good push kick down the middle that really slowed him down. And I was crushing it in sparring, so I was like real real happy to start hitting that. You're right? confident about a it. Good, yeah. a, good, a good weapon for me to throw, but he, he caught it, hit a takedown, I posted my arm on the way down, and instantly just came out the top. Um, Ain't that a and so the whole rest of the round, I'm just like trying to. Like it, was, <laughs> it was like he was on top hitting me. And I was like trying to pull my shoulder in the socket or block punches. I had sure. to like decide which one was more important, yeah. you know. So yeah. I remember like trying to pull my shoulder out. He'd be punching me like, all right, block so I don't stop it. Yeah, like, and then I'll yeah, go back to pull here, my shoulder here, in. Here, yeah, here. <laughs> Pick your poison, man. Yeah. Yet, uh, it, who was it trying to put your sh uh, shoulder back in the socket between the rounds? Uh, Felipe Della Monica, my jiu-jitsu coach. He's the one that popped it back in most of the times during training camp. And there seems to be, and Dana said this, uh, maybe on the Patty podcast he did, but, you know, Yeri, mm -hmm. the, the light heavyweight champion, or formerly, because he, uh, uh, you know, gave yeah, up the belt. Yep. But he was, his shoulder got really bad because I guess he was training, came out, and his boys were like, oh, dude, you just pop it back in. It's like Mel Gibson from Lethal Weapon. <laughs> yeah. And I guess they, like, once the doctor got to it, he's like, well, this is the worst shoulder injury I've ever seen. Because mm. it wasn't bad at first, but then when his boys were, like, jerking it back and forth, because they're not professionals, it just did way more damage. So he's out for a hot second. You know, but there's a thing. You know, I've had my shoulder pop down in football. My buddy just put it back in. Mm -hmm. So they're like, never do that. But it's like, I think that works more than not you mm -hmm. know where you just pop back in you care about it on your business but the on the other end of that with Yeri, it's like probably should let professionals handle it yeah there's a right way to do it right and unfortunately i knew how to do that because um, it happened so many times and my shoulders have just been bad i mean same thing with aaron pico right they didn't yeah, know that's right. they didn't expect it to happen so they're just yanking on his shoulder and tears labor a little bit worse yeah um so i game plan for it i hate had a meeting with my doctor i was like hey will you do a video of the best way for me to put my shoulder oh, back in the socket oh tight move it might happen. Right? Yeah. And if this happened, and Aaron Pico's fight was before my fight. Yeah. So I was actually, I was like, ah, I should fucking, I should game plan this on how to put it back in. Yeah, let's in. not bro science my shoulder during yeah, the middle so of the title fight. Yeah, so I had Dr. Moore film a video on how to do it perfectly. And so I, you know, sent it to Felipe, my jiu-jitsu coach. Okay, that's smart. So I had a game plan going like to the fight. I like this now. Most likely it was going to happen, and he'd be able to pop it back in. Um, and, and if you haven't dislocated your shoulder, so the last thing you want to do is, like, go to the doctor and wait three hours with your shoulder out of the socket because it's so fucking uncomfortable. It's so uncomfortable. It feels it it hurts, so much better once it's in. You yeah. know, you're, like, you can see me in the corner uh, at the end, at, in between the first and second round. I'm, like, bent over and Felipe's trying to pull it in. Yeah. And then as soon as it goes in, it's just, like, instant relief. I'm like, bah, I yes. sit up. I'm like, all right, I'm good. Yeah, yeah. The doctor comes over, like, perfect timing, too. They put it in. The doctor came over. I was like, I'm good, doc. Don't worry about it. He's, like, pushing against my arm. I'm like, see, it's good. Let's He's go. Like, okay, I guess this works. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Let's take a little break from chatting with my boy TJ Dillashaw on this Food Truck Diaries, and he's talking about retirement, but I'm talking about DraftKings Sportsbook, an official sports betting partner, the NFL. It's my go-to for betting this NFL season, especially during the holidays, man. The same game parlays are great. My favorite part is the easy and fast payouts. They got the best props out there. And right now, new customers can bet just five buckaroos on any NFL team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. Check this out. Right now, everyone can earn up to 100% boost with DraftKings stepped-up same-game parlays. Go to the DraftKings Sportsbook app, place the same-game parlay, and combine multiple bets like which team will win, player props, point totals, and so much more. The more legs that you add, the bigger the boost, the bigger your shot to win big. That's right. You got the Niners. They're hot right now. Purdy, the Mr. Irrelevant, six-round draft pick, is balling. He has too many weapons at his disposal to lose. Don't bet on my Broncos. That's the best advice I can give you. Do not bet on my Broncos. I'm so sorry. Denver, you get it. Download the DraftKings Sportsbook app right now. Use the code SHABSHOW, S-E-H-A-B, SHOW. Place a $5 bet on any NFL team to win their game and get $150 in free bets if they do. Only at DraftKings Sportsbook with code SHABSHOW. Minimum age, eligibility restrictions apply. See show notes for detail. DraftKings, promo code SHABSHOW. On it supplements, the best supplements on planet freaking Earth. They got it all. It's a company you guys can trust. And if you're hearing all the talk around the water cooler about these nootropics, well, on it makes not only a nootropic, but they make the best nootropic. We're talking about Alpha Brain. You've heard the one and only Joe Rogan talk about 
nootropics and talk about alpha brain. He takes alpha brain, says, him, says he helps him form better sentences. And I didn't take my alpha brain today, so you can tell I'm all over the place. I wish I had it. If I did, this would be way smoother and way cooler. You want to be more like Joe Rogan, less like me. Take your alpha brain. If you want to save 10% off, you go to onit.com slash FTD, that stands for Food Drug Diaries, right? So on it.com slash FTD, you save 10% off not only Alpha Brain, the best nootropic on the planet, they sold o- over 1 million bottles. And guess what? If you don't like it, you get your money back. No return necessary. Keep the bottle. We don't care. That's how sure on it is of their Alpha Brain product. But not only do you get 10% off Alpha Brain, you get 10% off the entire site. Protein bars, warrior bars. Protein powder, krill oils, multivitamins, shroom tech, they got it all. Kettlebells, steel club maces, workout gear, streaming fitness uh, for you too. So don't wait till January 1st to get your thick butt in shape. Start right now and have the proper equipment, the best supplements on planet Earth, the best nootropic alpha brain. Onnit.com slash FTD, 10% off the entire freaking site of Onnit. Onnit.com slash FTD. Now let's get back to the program. So I mean, just I, just like with anything, just like with any technique, or diet, or weight cut, you got to game plan it all. And so I just game plan. That's brilliant. Worst case scenario, and uh, unfortunately, yeah, I just thought your jiu-jitsu coach was bro science. And like, let me just jam it back in there. I've, I've seen lethal weapon, you know. <laughs> yeah. It's like, no, dude, you guys actually had a plan for it. And unfortunately, somebody's my, shoulder just blew out. Yeah, mine was so bad that it was. It, it went back in pretty. It would go in and out. That because you know? it, 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 it everything's so loose. The li- ligaments because I mean, you popped it so many times. Yeah. So I had the conversation with the doctor, and he kind of going over like what was wrong with my shoulder. I had a fully torn two of my rotator cuffs were fully torn off the bone. My supraspinatus, my infraspinatus, my labrum was torn, my bicep tendon was torn, and then also the head of the humerus that goes into yeah. the shoulder had like Chip. a had like a big dent out of it. Eesh. Just because I dislocated it so many times, and every time you dislocate it and put it back in, it just wears it out, you know? Yeah, that time your body's just, it's almost like muscle memory, which can keep pop. It's just going to keep happening. You have that well, it's not round, right? Yeah, it's so not it's round. Just, it's yeah, just so gonna it's pop easy out. to pop mm-hmm. out. Yeah. So you get done with the fight. You're back in the locker room. I'm sure, you know, you're really upset. How, because the announcement came quite some time after the fight. Mm-hmm. Like, what, what went into that process? Announcement of retirement? Yeah. Oh, I didn't retire until... A, a ways after the 30th of November. Yeah. Yeah, so I had surgery on the 10th, and the doctor just- Going into surgery, real quick, going into surgery, plan wasn't to retire. No. No. Not really. No, I mean, I didn't have, no, I wasn't at all. I mean, I remember doing interviews like, this ain't the end of me. Yep. And I'm coming back. And then talked to the doctor and just actually what's going on with my shoulder and what the likelihood of it actually healing to its fullest. Um, and then it's just kind of a snowball effect too. So I have my five-year-old son. The only fights he can really remember are my last two fights. San Hagen, I blow my knee out. Good fight though. So during fight camp, I'm, I'm not, I'm not daddy. Yeah. You know what I mean? I am and I'm not. But I'm like, in Colorado for half the training camp. I'm traveling. I'm gone. He misses me when I'm gone. I'm gone at my fight. I get back. I'm on one leg. I'm laid up. Can't be playing with him the way I'd like to. And then my Aljo fight. Right. I'm out in Abu Dhabi for two weeks. Come back. Get, get shoulder surgery. So he told me. He's told me like probably a good ten times. Dad, I don't want you to fight again. Nothing you know? worse. Yeah, like, yeah. I, don't want you, I don't want you to eat twice. And every time you tell me, he's like, ah, fuck it, dig deep, you know? And then the doctor's appointment, tell me about my shoulder. It's fucking, I don't know, man. It's, it, was, it, was, it still is tough. I know? can tell you're still struggling with it. I, yeah. yeah I, uh, how, how old is your son? He's five. Turned yeah, five in December. Yeah, and they, that's when they start to realize, like, oh, dad's leaving. You know, when they're really little, they really don't know. And they yeah. come back, like, there he is. They didn't even know yeah. you are gone that long. Yeah, my son, when, I, when I'm on tour... Like, they'll grab my luggage. Like, Daddy, don't go. It's yeah. like, oh, you're making it so much worse, dude. I'm only gone three days. Like, I can't imagine what you're going through. Yeah, yeah and if you give a shit about being a dad, it's super important, man. Yeah. You know, it, re- it really is. Yeah, yeah. So we're, that, we're trying to grow our family, you know, um, going through, like, fertility stuff as well, too. So it's just, a, just like you said, a snowball effect of reasons to, I'm being very successful in business outside the cage. Yeah, we're right? best so to like, do it outside. Yeah. So I don't have to fight. I've been saying that before this fight. It's like I didn't take the fight for the paycheck. I took the fight to be back on top and to prove that I'm the best in the world. So I'm successful out of the cage with business. Don't need the money for fighting. Um, Got to, you know, I, I've built a great life for myself and my family, and now it's time to fucking enjoy it, you know? Yeah, when you retired, I was like, yeah, that makes sense. You know, it's like, I always like when guys retire. I hate when guys stick around too long, and then, you know, we've seen this story before. So I'd rather a guy retire early and stick around than they end up, you know, face down, ass up. Yeah. So also, you're one of the greatest to ever do it. 
Venom Wade, you're one of the best to ever do it. You know, first bout Hall of Famer. So it'd been nice to get the belt. All good, you yeah. know, all good. It was a comeback story. You know, you've done some insane stuff. You know, one of the best to ever do it. So, you know, I think your son's proud, your family's proud. So you don't have much to prove. I just know you and there's this fire yeah. inside here yeah. and I don't know what you're going to do. You know what I'm saying? Like, you got a lot going on, but yeah, you know, you, you, that, you gotta you gotta figure out something, and maybe maybe you're doing it. Maybe maybe it's these businesses that you can put your passionate, you know, your passion about and the fire into that. Yeah, yeah. I mean, no matter what, I'm gonna work my ass off. Right, no matter what it is, but it's just it's insane. different. It's different, right? You know, when you're a world fucking champion in something, and it's like, you know, in the way that I got it taken from me and just not getting it back, it, it's gonna fucking burn, right? But the thing that bothers me too, when you're not your retirement, <clears throat> I saw. Uh, some of the comments from some of the other fighters who, you know, salty or whatever. I'm just like, still? Yeah. Like, really? Yeah. No, he's, yeah. he's walking away, man. Like, yeah. you don't have to worry about it. Yeah, I can't it's retire in peace, dog. No, it's like, Jesus <laughs> Christ. What's yeah. wrong? I don't get it. Yeah. I figure most people be like, thank you, TJ. One of the best to do it. Thank you so much. Which something a lot, the majority were. But then a few of them, you're just like, really? Yeah. Still? Yeah. You're still bitter? Yeah, it is what it is, man. Yeah. You know, you, you got to be jealous of uh, someone else's success. So. Correct. Well, they're going to be even more jealous. I always say this. It, if they thought what you did in the lockdown was good, what yeah. you have going on outside, like you're just getting started. So yep. the haters need to just sit in tight because you're going to get better. It's going to get a lot better, yeah, for sure. You, I'll give you more to hate on. Yeah, I appreciate know? it, man. Well, because you're retired, my man, um, I have a, a Mexican food truck for you. I'm told the only thing they're going to give us is quesadillas with extra cheese and meat. So at least we don't have to worry about cutting weight. Yeah, it's bulking season, <laughs> So you can't dude. blame it for, on me, dude. <laughs> yeah. So we're going to try and thicken you up, make Hell you yeah. a proper thick boy. Hell so yeah. let me feed you, and then we'll get into the rest of the interview. Let's do it, Let's man. do it, my man. Let's take a little break from chatting about food, retirement, and quesadillas with my boy, TJ Dillashaw, because I'm here to talk to you about a little product called Happy Hippo. That's right. If you've ever seen that movie Limitless with Bradley Cooper, Happy Hippo Kratom is not going to make you look like Bradley Cooper in that movie, but you're going to be thinking like him and getting things done like him. That's right. There's actually a little something-something that can help you get close to that limitless pill. I'm talking about Happy Hippo Kratom. It's safe. It's great. I use the cherry uh, high concentrated shots before every show, before anything I do, anything on stage, anything on TV, anything on podcasting. I got Happy Hippo flowing through these veins, these thick veins. It's Happy Hippo, baby. It's the best focus product I've ever used. Best part, it's all natural. So if you don't know who to trust in this Kratom game, you can trust my friends at Happy Hippo. And if you visit happyhippo.com, use the promo code THICKBOY, you save 20% off for life. You can use them many times you want. Share it with your family, your aunt, your classmates in college. You share it with your gay aunt, uncle. We don't care. We don't discriminate around here. If you want good Kratom, you want the best, somebody you can trust, we're talking about Happy Hippo. Happyhippo.com, promo code THICKBOY, 20% off for life. Now let's get back to the program. Oh my God, you know I had to do it big. Like my women, like my checks, so make sure that it's thick. Keep it real and make them stand out like comedian. Stand in ovation, they want me to do it again. I guess that How you doing? I'm good, how are you today? Uh, we're good, looking for some quesadillas. Heard this is the place to come. Uh, what are you thinking? Steak, pork, chicken? I'm going El Pastor. El Pastor? Yeah, El Pastor, please. For you? And I'll do one Al Pastor and one steak, please. Okay. That's how thick boys do it right yeah, there, dude. dude. Yeah, yeah dude. Gotta like, get I too. died it for this. <laughs> it's a celebration of retirement, dude. I gotta double up. You know what? Just give me any reason to celebrate. You <laughs> Thank there. you so much. Thank you. Appreciate you. All right, man, man, little uh, little quesadilla. I don't remember what we had on the last food truck. Does anyone remember what we had with TJ? It was my food truck. Oh, that's I right. I brought my own food the, truck. Your, your, your yeah, green clean, juice truck. clean juice, yeah. That's right. Yeah. How's that going? It's going good, man. Um, we're taking over Southern California right now. We're building out uh, yeah, stores. Nice. We're building out one in Dana Point right now. We have one here in Agora Hills. Oh, really? Mm-hmm. And then, you guys uh, had smoothies and stuff too? Yeah, smoothies, acai bowls, um, sandwiches, wraps, um, cold pressed juicing, a little bit of everything, you know? What's going to make this better is you got the truff in here too. That, dude, that, this isn't a sponsor, that the truff hot the sauce. The truff hot sauce. Yeah. It's hot sauce with some little truffle, little so truffle good. pig in there. It's truffle pig sweat. It is nice. 
It's so good. Are you worried about blowing up? Yeah, when you retire a little bit. You gotta watch. You're not. You know. You're not training like you used to. Yeah. Yeah. But I've been jumping on the Peloton, doing some long rides and sweating yeah. at least, because I can't, I can't do cardio right now either, dude. Because my shoulder, I can't run, you know. So I gotta like be smart about how I'm training. Hit the, the road, time. dude. On that road bike, that's what I got yeah. into. Once I retire, so you get hitting those road bikes and. But I'm, I'm in a sling for the most part. So if I <laughs> crash on a bike, <laughs> <laughs> <I'm> sorry, <laughs> that's the last thing I need that's to do is be idea. riding a road bike right yeah, now. Don't you know. To me on that <laughs> So I've been riding the Peloton in the garage at least, you know, is, uh, can't really fall off that fucking yeah. thing. Yeah, <laughs> it's a good workout though. I love uh -huh. That's how I got started in the bike in Peloton. Mm -hmm. But uh, wifey mm -hmm. excited you retired? Was it kind yeah. of like a Tom Brady situation? Like Giselle was like, it's either me or football. And he's like, say less, football. <laughs> but it's going to go terrible. <laughs> They're like the worst team in the league. No, she, I shouldn't play. It was last night, right? And they got smashed mm. by the Niners. No, she'd never give me an ultimatum like that, but you know, she was definitely looking forward to the time of when I step away so that I'm not in those training camps where I'm not just like solely focused on my next fight and watching tape and training all day and then traveling for camp, you know? Yeah, she gets her husband back and a dad. Yeah, exactly. That has a helping hand. Yeah, exactly. But then is she, uh, I mean, because you're a busy dude outside the octagon, I th that's why it's always nice when guys do retire early because it means... You have something to do. Mm -hmm. The guys who stick around way too long, they don't have much else going on. It's like, you know, they might hold mitts at a UFC gym, but, you know, they're not that excited to get to that part of their life, so they yeah, stick around. Yeah, it's not going to pay you to do yeah. that, you know? So with you, you got, you got the, the greens, food truck. <clears throat> yeah, so I got Clean Juice, which has been doing good. We're, like, we're uh, area developer for Southern California, and I got some exciting projects that I can't talk about yet that's coming out with that. Love it. That will be, you know, um, in, like, retail retail stores and stuff, which has been pretty cool. That'd be dope. Um, I'm a part of a company called Zook. It's a cannabis company. We have a farm up in Northern California, and we're spreading in uh, dispensaries down here in Southern California. Um, those are like the big two projects I got going on right now that are taking a lot of my time. I was going to say, just though, if, you, if, yeah. if you list off like 10 things, like, all right, well, let's dial it in a little bit. Well, the area development. Those are going to be big boys. Yeah, yeah. Well, the area development for Southern California is big, right? Open up brick and mortars and things yeah, in Southern oh California. Yeah. But then the retail side of it's even bigger. And that's going to be a whole other side of us uh, spreading, spreading the whole nation. So it's exciting. And that, that one to me is like taking most of my time right now. Now, call me crazy, but. Say so a year from now, that shoulder's feeling good. You <laughs> got home with the wife, kiddos. You turn on UFC 99 or where the hell they're going to be on. And you're seeing the Bantamweight Championship going down. You're like, you look at your wife like, I feel like you beat these guys. You don't think you ever have that itch come back? Because it's, it's a thing, right? Guys retire and then they're like, you know what? I'm not done yet. We'll see, man. We'll see how successful things turn out for me in the outside the cage and True. just how, how busy I am and just... Uh, That'd be a good problem to have. What life looks like, you yeah. know? Because I might be so busy that, you know, I'm already am kind of that busy where I don't, don't have time to even come back. Even when I did come back and, like, had to, like, put business in the back to deal with the fight. It's tough. You know, it was, it was uh, because that business is going to pay me for the rest of my life or this fight's only going to pay me now. So Short term. But, you know, when I was eight weeks out, I was like, all right, sorry, guys, you ain't going to get a hold of me. I'm not dealing with anything business-related unless it's got to do with my fight, you know? So I'm sure they understood that. They did, yeah. And you, you leave the division, and it's in an interesting spot because, you know, bandweight division is pretty stacked. Mm -hmm. You know, so you got Al Jermaine, the champ, obviously, and then they announced he's going to fight uh, Henry Cejudo, who's coming out of retirement mm -hmm. to do that fight. Thoughts on, on that fight? I think Sudo wins. I do, man. I think he's... Uh, it's we'll tough see. to pick against him. Yeah, it is. It's tough to pick against him. He, and he's just... Um, I think he's sharper on the feet. I don't think Alger's going to be able to out-wrestle him, you know? Um, Alger's got the better jits, but I don't think he's going to be able to like take advantage of that because of the wrestling. And then Sudo's really good at distance control with like that like karate style base now that he has. Fighter. You know, he's, he's pretty smart. Mentality. What about ring rust? Yep. But he's been in the gym so much. I feel like he's always coaching and helping guys out. I agree. He retired, and I knew it was like a play to try to get more money, right? And now he's back at the right time. I think it's a great fight for him. And he's been just constantly in the gym helping people out, training for their fights. Um, like when I was on my suspension, I was helping one or get him for his fight, so I didn't feel like ring rust was there, you know, because... Yeah, you're still involved and thinking about it. Yeah, I wouldn't let... And, and if you're smart, if he's coming back, he's going to do a couple camps. He's not going to just do one camp for this fight. He'll probably do a test camp, get his body into shape and get down to weight, and then... One of the smartest to ever do it. Yeah. And that's, that's, I think one of his biggest assets is how well he uses what tools he has. Yeah. 
and integrating those into his game plan and just mentally he's as tough as they come. I mean, he's an Olympic fucking champion. Yeah, you dude. Know? You know, like Two division champion. Yeah. Any, uh, when you look back on your career, I mean, obviously, I, I think I know the answer, but any regrets? 10 to 25? 100%. I mean, that's like the biggest regret I have right now is yeah. cutting 25s, yeah. And just like, not only just getting in trouble, just what I did to my body, you know? Because like, everyone's seen that I got in trouble and I got suspended, but <laughs> dude, like the six months after that of me like bouncing back from that weight cut Nightmare. just destroyed my metabolism, looked like shit, went through surgery. So like, that was hard on me. That was hard on my hormones. It was hard on everything, man. That's yeah. That's why the the one kind of you look at your resume. That's one like, eh, I probably shouldn't have done that. Yeah. Especially just the wear and tear on your body, which I'm sure doesn't you know. Probably it's not the reason you're injured, but it didn't help. No, definitely didn't help. Your body of all those nutrients and yeah. come to that weight. I wouldn't have gotten in trouble. None of that shit would have happened. Uh -huh. Right. So that'd have been a, a big difference as well. So yeah, that's my biggest regret for sure is trying to go down to 25s. I should. Same thing as like why I feel like I took this fight this last time too, right? Like you just have the ultimate belief and a goal. Like when I put a goal in my head, I'm gonna work my fucking ass off till I get it, it done. When I said I'm gonna be double champ going down twenty fives, it's like I'm getting it done, you know. Like and that's like, what I said. I'm sticking by it. Well, I yeah. don't think you get to your level and your tenacity, you know, that Mamba mentality. Without, you know, obviously it's the impossible you're trying to do. So that's what it takes. Yeah, you know, it gets into trouble sometimes. Yeah, everyone gets some trouble with that mentality. Everybody, no matter who you are. Yeah. And if, you say, if you're a guy that says you haven't made a mistake, I don't fucking trust you then anyways. Me neither. <laughs> you know. It's like that billionaire got busted, the weird whatever guy, the crypto guy where he's in. Oh, that's he's right. a billionaire and he's in sandals and drove a Prius. Like, I don't, you know, I'm not about money. I'm like, I do not trust that guy <laughs> yeah. in any facet. Yeah. The billionaire in sandals and the Prius? Yeah. Who are you doing it for, dude? I wasn't buying that. Weird. Um, <laughs> everyone's like, love it. Um, no, I feel you. But uh, outside that, not, I mean, you look at your career, it's been a great run, man. Yeah, it's been, it's been great. It really has. I mean, like I said, I've built a great life for myself. And I've, you know, accomplished everything that I've wanted to, right? Obviously, there's always more. Right? There's always more you can do. But I've done it, right? So I've built this great life. And the, r the reason why I'm stepping away is because it is time to enjoy it. I don't want to be the guy that just keeps going after it. And then, you know, it's too late to actually enjoy what I've built. And you know? kids grow so fast. It's... It's, it's absurd. I like wish I could freeze them. I know. It's heartbreaking. I know, man. And it's like you don't realize how fast time goes by until you have a kid. Because everyone would say, you're like, oh, enjoy this time. It goes by so fast. But then when you have a kid, it just happens right in front of your face. It's heartbreaking. You know? Like you see your career go by, and I feel like it took forever. But when I watch my son go from being a baby to five years old, it's fucking absurd, it's awful. Man. Yeah, you don't yeah. miss out on that. Yeah. Um, yeah. You, you tell me if I'm off on this, but... I'll tell you what, uh, and again, you know, obviously Connor gets a lot of shit for some of the antics he does. So Connor fights Dustin Poirier, blows his knee out or whatever. Oh, no, blow, breaks his leg in half. Breaks his leg in half. Basically yeah. does the Anderson Silva. Uh, snaps his leg. So he does all that. So, yeah, yeah his leg falls off. Yeah. <laughs> his leg falls off. He gets, <laughs> then he gets out of the USADA testing. He's on his yacht and his Gucci stuff doing his thing. And everyone's up in arms about it, like, this isn't fair. And I'm going... That's exactly what I would do. The only because guys... The, the th best way to do it is by taking, you know, and people like, oh, steroids. No, you're talking about peptides and HGH to, to, to speed the body to recovery at his age to get back to a fighting shape, you know? I don't have an issue with it mm. at all. When guys are that injured, I hate to tell you, that's what a lot of guys do in the offseason in other sports. That's how they come back so fast. We don't have an offseason. Yeah, I know. We don't get an offseason. We're tested 365 days a year. You don't get time to heal. You don't get, you know, you don't get these downtimes. The guy's in movies. He's doing all this shit. His leg's broken in half. And even if he were to take steroids to recover himself, he can't compete with it in his system. So he's not going to have any kind of advantage Correct. from taking what he's taking. He's speed up the all he's doing is healing. Yeah. You know, if you're telling me that a guy can't heal, it's going to make not only himself, but the UFC hundreds of millions of dollars. It makes no sense not to. That's like why it. I think the UFC hasn't really commented on it. Like, yeah, you know, the Conor Loop. Well, he's not doing anything wrong. You know what yeah, I mean? He's not fighting. When he fights, he'll be tested, and yeah. that'll be out of his system. Yeah. I mean, if I if I, there's a guy retired and I had to fight him, he's not. I know he's not fighting when he's on the shit. So it's whatever. Mm -hmm. you know, if he can heal the right way, he actually has a career. Because I mean, do you break your leg like that? You might not ever come back. You know. Never the same. Yeah. Only the biggest cash cow. I'm sure the UFC's like, do what you got to do on that yacht, daddy. Mm -hmm. You know? I would do the same thing. Mm -hmm. I, I, gotta, 
I gotta assume you're relieved you saw this not coming around anymore. <coughs> Were they just constantly? Since I'm one of the, I'm the second most tested athlete in the UFC roster. Ah, Costas got me beat. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, Paulo Costas got me beat, man. Costas is funny with it. Too, he man. is, man. He, well, you finally like turned a new leaf with it, right? Because I never thought the Costa was funny in the past, you know. But then he just like decided to like run with it, and I think it's pretty fucking funny. Yeah, he was like kind of this mean troll at first, but mm -hmm. then he, he started to get more creative and like funny about it. That's mm -hmm. hilarious. Yeah, I like he just it. Just gives yeah. him shit. Yeah, like poke fun. Like here's my secret sauce. You yeah. know, it's like fan <laughs> or whatever. Yeah, yeah, he's funny with it. Mm -hmm. But yeah, that that usada, that exhaust, right? Coming early in the mornings. At right? six o'clock in the morning. Or dude, vacation. Every time my wife is saying like, every time we've gone on vacation or we went and done something, they've always showed up. I go to Columbia to get stem cells, they show up. We go on vacation somewhere, they show up. They think that like you're like changing your whereabouts to like sneak something by them. But yeah, no yeah. matter where. Yeah. I bet I bet you're excited to get done with that, man. It's like my son's so used to it too. Like these people show up to our house and What's up, Gary? Dad, <laughs> Gary's here. <laughs> He'll like answer the door the like again. <laughs> Dad, Gary. <laughs> yeah. Girl, you're yeah. fine. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. He's used to like these people coming over, hanging out at my house for like two hours, drug testing me. Because they'll show up, and like I've just pissed or I just yeah. took a shit, right? And they gotta like, chill. Yeah, they gotta wait. Right, I gotta Gary's wait. Waiting. Yeah, he's got same Gary, but even if I have something to do, they'll follow me. If I gotta go to practice, they'll follow me to practice. Like they're there until you like have to go to the bathroom again, you know? So yeah, it's, it'll definitely be uh, nice not to have to deal with that. But I definitely didn't have any con like that wasn't. That's just a more deciding a, factor. No, it's just more annoying than anything. It was funny. Like I was on the verge of like deciding to um, retire or not after talking to the doctor, and you know my son telling me weighing in like he did not want me to fight. My you know my wife's you know over just the the drama that comes with fighting, right? So ever since I left, it's exhausting. Alpha male. Yeah, it's just been a fucking exhausting shit, shit show. show. You know what I mean? Yeah. Just and so that that part will be nice of it as well too. And then. I don't know, we were doing something, getting ready for Christmas or doing something, and they show up. We're supposed to go out to dinner. It's like, you gotta be fucking kidding me, you know? It's like, all right, maybe I should just retire yeah, and yeah, be done with this shit. You guys aren't helping this. <laughs> yeah, they helping yeah, my decision. I think yeah, it's, it, it's interesting, and you know, it's just the, the culture and climate we live in, because the UFC's a newer, one of the big five professional sports, the newest one, so it, the birth of the UFC and Mixed Martial Arts was on social media and Sheer Dog on the forum, so it does build this like toxic culture, so, I'll see the treatment, you know, when, after the Cejudo fight. I get it a little bit, right? Yeah. But to the, even to this point now, like you said, when you're not your retirement, guys are still going at it. I'm like, really? And so I think maybe I'm defensive of it because I'm a guy that gets a lot of hate too, right? Mm. But I'm, I'm 39 years old. Mm. I, I, I understand that I can deal with it. But when I see it, the, the, the hate gun pointing towards a young kid like Patty Pimlet, mm. you look at what's going on with him and... The, the way the MMA media is portraying it, like, oh, biggest robber in UFC history, and is he the most overrated fighter of all time? Is it him, or, you know, is it Paige Van Zandt? And, like, it's just like, holy shit, man, this kid's 27 years old, yeah. trying to live his dream. He has nothing to do with the judging. He has nothing to do with it. Be mad at the judges. Don't be yeah. mad at Patty. Yeah. I just see it going down this toxic road. I'm like, oh, you guys have no idea what that kid has to deal with, man. Because yeah. you guys paint this nasty, nasty narrative on him. So it bums me out. I've been on both sides of it, right? Because I've been, I feel like, one of those haters in the past, uh -huh. right? Because I was world champion. I was fucking do what I was supposed to do. I was working my ass off. Then you see this guy fucking Conor McGregor coming to the scene, right? Like, just sprung onto the scene. You see, just backing him, paying yeah. him a bunch of money, this and that. It's like, fuck this guy, right? And yeah. it's like, you instantly want to hate on him. Yeah. And then, um, you know, being on the other side of it, now it's like being, being hated or even just now putting in all the work of all the... Uh, so having to go through the drama of leaving Alpha Male or fighting Garbrandt and going through all that stuff, that's when I got paid the most, right? So you start to, uh, you start to understand it. And, and yeah. yeah, so you do feel bad for the pimblets, right? Because yeah, yeah. I didn't watch the fight, but you read on Instagram or like any of these um, uh, media coverages, Anything. they're like, the biggest fucking robbery ever. And then I hear talk to someone else, and it's like, oh, it really wasn't that bad. See, but you know what the problem is, is because we live in like a s digital social media world, so maybe the majority of the people, you know, a good amount of people watch, but not as many people are going to see that post from whatever, insert whatever journalist or insert whatever big MMA social media handle. People, More people can see that than about the pay-per-view. Mm -hmm. So if that narrative is, you know, biggest robbery of all time, Patty's awful, he's not worth the money, well, that, that and then that just becomes normalized. Then yep. it's like, oh, there's Patty, and you're you're tearing down this star that has what? so much potential. He's gonna make so much more money because of it, though. Yeah, you're right. 
I mean, there's, that, like, there's the Floyd Mayweather effect where yeah. you're paying to see him win or lose. Yeah, yeah. They're going to hate him for that, and they're going to like talk shit about him getting hooked up or the UFC's favorite little boy. Then they're going to want to watch him lose, and he's going to get paid more. Yeah, I, th- I think one of the reasons I was trying to think about it because I was doing shop show today, and I, was, I was like, God, I don't, like I've had Patty on here, and you know, I've had everybody on here. And he's one of my favorite people. Like he had so much energy. He's a guy you just you almost got to find a way to get in. He'll just he's a guy when he's doing like a, his thing, he'll look, he'll be like, which one's my camera? And he'll do it at the camera, like this is a WWE mm-hmm. guy, like he just knows, he's just entertaining, he checks every box. Um, so I was like, man, he has so much light and he's a positive person, obviously he has his beef, beef with Ariel and stuff like that. I'm like, I, I just don't get it. And he, it's not his fault that the judges gave it to him and you know he has no control of that. Then I, I think a bit of it that's really pissing people off is A, the judge's decision, which he has nothing to do with, but that's just the world we live in. Then B, he did that podcast where he's like mates with Dana White. Mm. It's like when you're mates with the warden of the prison, the other prisoners aren't gonna dig that. Mm, yeah. You're getting special treatment, you're getting an extra, you know, Twinkie, he's giving you a nice bed, you know, that the other inmates are gonna fuck hate you, man. Yep. Some people yeah. are like, that's unfair, you know. Well, it's like exactly what I was saying, I was hating on Connor when he came on the scene, yeah. right? But then you realize when you're on the other side of it, how much work actually goes into it's being exhausting. that motherfucker. It's exhausting. You know, like, I actually wouldn't want to be that. Mm-hmm. You know, because, I mean, yeah, there's a fucking start on the money, all that shit comes with it. But it's like, bro, that motherfucker never gets a day off. Like, never. he's stacked, you know. So uh, Pimlet's going to work his way up to that. I mean, it takes a lot of work. You yeah, know? I think with uh, Patty, I'd like to see what how you assess his skill set. But to me, it's like the, his notoriety and his fame has surpassed his, his skill set. 100%. And I, I, think, I do think Patty has the ability to be world champion. But you gotta give him time. Yeah. And when they compare him to Conor McGregor, he's not Conor. What mm. Conor did was very special and he's one of one. But for Patty, if you just give the guy time to get to where you guys put him in his fame, he'll get there, but you're you're gonna miss out on a great thing if you wanna tear this Liverpool star down before he even gets started, mm-hmm. man. Because there's things out reaching where he's at skill set. I, I couldn't agree So more. UFC has to do a good job pairing him up for his next fights. Was that his third UFC fight? Uh, that, was that his fourth or third? Which is like a certain thing. Because he did two in England, then one of the, the that might be his fourth, right? The, the, yeah. Because you got to go back and look at the most, most UFC fighters when they have three UFC fights. You know, they're fighting guys that are on their level, but he's so hyped up, they're expecting to fight a top 15 guy already. But it's like, why? He's only, he's only his third UFC fight. It's a, it's a marathon, fourth. not, not yeah. a sprint, man. Yeah. For him, it's just like, slow down, dude. Because... Yeah. Almost finished with this classic episode of Food Truck Diaries with TJ Dillashaw. But before we end, I got to let you guys know, we got to take a little break. I got to live. I gotta give TJ Dillashaw a little break, all right? He wants to finish his quesadilla, and I want to talk to you about Rogue. That's right. If you watch any show that I do, Food Truck Diaries, Cowbass's Fight Companion, Fight Night Flashback, Fire and the Kid, Golden Hour, I do too many shows. It's a shop show. Whatever I'm doing, you'll notice one product and one product in every single show. It's in my mouth, but it's also usually on the desk. We're talking about Rogue. We're talking about Rogue nicotine. And I reached out to my friends at Rogue and I said, hey, you know I use it. Please be part of the program because I swear by this product. It's the only way I get my nicotine is through their pouches. But they don't just have pouches. They have lozenges. They got freaking gum. They got it all, man. They got tablets for you. So if you don't want the pouches, which you should, but if you don't, there's other ways, lozenges, uh, tablets, gum. They got it all. My favorite flavor right now is the apple, but they also got the lemon honey drop, which I really dig right now. I like to switch throughout the day. Green, yellow, green, yellow. They got freaking peppermint, wintergreen, berry. The flavor is fantastic. That's why I only use Rogue. It, Rogue destroys anything else out on the market. There's nothing like Rogue, especially with the, the six milligram. They have three and six, but I use six because, you know, I live rough, all right? So get the six milligram if you want to be like your boy here. All right, I take it anywhere I want. Flights, the airport, green rooms, podcast studios, at home, in the gym, riding my bike. It goes everywhere with me. There's no restrictions. So Rogue is my go-to source for nicotine, all right? Um, if you want to try the pouches like your boy here or the gums, tablets, however you get your nicotine, go to roguenicotine.com. Use the code ROGUE20. That's R-O-G-U-E 20 for 20% off your entire order. Again, that's ROGUE20 for 20% off your entire order. Rogue Nicotine is the best nicotine on the planet. We're talking about Rogue Daddy. All right. Underage sales prohibited. Warning, this product contains nicotine. 
Nicotine is an addictive chemical. For more information, visit RogueNicotine.com. Rogue, get you some. Now let's get back to the program. They've done that with sugar, Sugar Sean. Yeah, yeah, Sugar does. Sugar's done a great job, man. I mean, they did. I mean, biggest promoted guy in 135s, you know. Yeah, and I think with Sugar, they did. They took their time with him. Then eventually, you know, they they gave him the Pedro Munoz, they gave him the Cheeto Veras, mm-hmm. and I think eventually UFC's like, all right, we built this star, we support him. Now it's shit or get off the pot, and mm-hmm. then it's like, boom, Peter Young, like, oh shit, yeah, <laughs> you guys know. ain't messing around. I know. But, you know, he did, however people want to say, he did pass that test, mm-hmm. you know? So now yep. he's sitting there at the number one, you know, in the world, mm-hmm. you know? So I just, you know, with, with the hate with Patty, to, I, I guess, you know, that's right. The, the guys who are hated the most make the most money. Yeah. There's the guys that. are. I mean, but the reason why they're hated the most is because most of it is jealousy, right? Yeah. I mean, most of it's jealousy and hate. Like, all the guys that are hating on Connor for doing what he's doing now, too, are most of the guys that have never made it. Mm-hmm. You know? There's never guys that have made it, been champions, and what they've done, that you don't see them coming out and talking shit about what he's doing, you know? You don't so. see Izzy or Kamaro hating no. about Yeah, Exactly. Yeah. It's most of the guys that, like, want to give him an excuse of why they didn't make yeah. it, you know? So you just got to remember all that shit when it comes with it. But ultimately, it, it, put, it lines your pockets, so. Yeah, that's a good point. You, know, you can only complain. You can only complain too much about... The hate being brought your way. Because it, it had to have been exhausting for you looking back on your career. Like when you're going through that, I just remember it's like in every headline, you know, I was doing the show. It was exhausting. I, was like, I, don't, I don't know what the hell. I don't want to get into it with Alpha Male and all that stuff. And then I remember forget who it was wanting to come on my show. I'm like, bro, I'm not Andy Cohen. This isn't, <laughs> this isn't Real Housewives of UFC. I'm not, I'm not into this whole thing. Man. Yeah, I don't know yeah. what the fuck happened. I'm friends with TJ, so I'm not yeah. definitely not giving you a platform to talk here. Yeah, you know? yeah. But for you, like, it has to be exhausting dealing with that all the time. Like, I, especially I, before a fight, it's like, oh, God. I feel like a lot. So, I love MMA. Yeah. I love the fighting, right? I've learned to just, like, a little bit of the business a little bit. And I think it all started when I left Alpha Male, right? Because I had, like, homeboys, buddies, best friends, you know, brothers. And then it just kind of fucking crashes and all the drama happens, Right. It, it like ruins a lot of it for me. And I'm not, I'm not a guy that's like really into that. There's guys that come in like the Patty Plymouth and the uh, Conor McGregor's that are into that shit. They're willing to do it. Like yeah, sugar. I never, Patty, yeah, exactly. Connor. Sugar. I wasn't into that shit, right? Yeah. I just got to the top because I was good. Correct. And then when the fucking all the drama happened, it kind of like took a lot of sail out of the winds of like enjoying fight weeks or going to the fights or being involved Cause in cause it. Because it's so, you're, you're, no matter what you say, it's energy. Yeah. You're putting this energy into that and you're thinking about it, you know? You're like, yeah. oh God, yeah. dude, I just want to fight, man. Yeah. But I started getting paid more. See, that's the, that's <laughs> yeah. the, see, that's the double-edged yeah. sword. It's yeah. like. There's more attention, more eyeballs on you, um, either because they hate you or they want to see the drama, they want to see the car crash. Mm-hmm. They want to see the bullshit. So you're going to get paid more because of it, right? Yeah, the but fans gravitate towards that, yeah. like, drama right and it does take a lot of fucking work yeah, so you know man. it's 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 valid you're getting paid for a reason because you're getting them eyeballs you know you're getting them views yeah, so by you having the alpha male guys on probably would have helped you out right but you didn't want to do it because of friendship stuff but yeah. ultimately it would have helped out the show or eyeballs and viewership you know you know I'm, I'm definitely not retiring anything like that from comedy or podcasting but you know i look back on things and i was talking to Callan about this and uh, theo and delia and some of my boys about it like I just never, like, and there's been a, you know, I have a million people come at me, don't like me for whatever reason, and they'll do stuff on their show, or, you know, a fighter, or journalists talk stuff about me, I've just never been the guy to, and I know it would get views, I know people like it, I just, yeah. I just don't like putting that energy out into the universe. You're taking it home. No, I can't. You gotta, you're gonna have to take the energy home with you. I can't, <laughs> yeah. I just can't. I think that's been a really hard part for me, is like, all the bullshit dealing with like the drama and whatnot is taking it home, right? And like trying to be a different person at home. Impossible. Than with everything else is going on. It's like you're, that's just going to put you in a bad mood. Then you're going home to this like wonderful child that just wants you to be dad and be cool and hang out and play fucking Legos. And you're thinking about fighting and drama. You're and trying to shit. try, you're like, right, son, listen. So there's <laughs> this, there's this form. He's yeah. like, what? <laughs> yeah. Like and he, Billy seven 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 nine said this. He's like, "What the hell is happening right now?" You're like, and Dad's stressed out. You Bro, know? that's funny you bring it up because like just happened like not too long ago. Like me being all stressed out because like my retirement got announced without me even like getting to announce it myself. That pissed me off. And like I'm like in a bad mood. He's like, "Dad, why your voice so grumpy?" Yeah. It's like, "Oh, I'm sorry, buddy." It's like I'm just dealing with. I like trying to explain like Instagram or media to him. And, like people talking shit about my job, and it's like. It's like, I don't understand. He's like, uh, why do you, it, I lo- the, the, when they just put in perspective, like, 
Why do you carry all? <laughs> That's a good point. <laughs> You're right. You're dude. five. <laughs> you got. You almost piss your pants over excitement over the bubbles. I need to be more like this kid. You yeah. know, like kids don't give it. It gives you perspective though. Yeah. Like you don't even really deal with my share of drama, and it will get to me. I'm like, oh, and they walk home, and they're just like, why am I giving this attention, dude? Yeah. You know, he's like, who cares? Your son's like, I don't give a shit, dude. Yeah. You know. Yeah. Yeah. They, I seriously, like, just so you started saying, it just happened the other day. You know. Yeah, with well, the retirement thing. You know, I, uh, <coughs> I don't know who your management is, but it's almost like I would prefer you come out and announce it yourself on your platform mm -hmm. and say what you want to say, then tell the, let the UFC find out you're tired. Yeah, I guess so. Yeah. Right? Yeah, I mean, but it was, I didn't ask my manager. I just did it. You know what I mean? Like, I went and saw the doctor. I was, like, with my son and just everything going on and just, like, fuck this. I'm done, you know? And so I just, like, uh, wrote a letter to uh, Hunter <laughs> and told him, like, hey, man, I'm just going to thank you for what you've done for the sport mm -hmm. and the platform you've given me and the name I've been able to build because of it, but it's just too much. I'm out right now. And he goes, cool, marketing team forward. <laughs> That's how that goes. I mean, know, they, well, they just they moved from the, the roster. Yeah. It wasn't even, like, they didn't announce <coughs> that I was retiring. It was that the UC just took me off. You know, I'm ranked number, what, one or two? Yeah. And then I'm just off the rankings. And, but you, got, you got those journalists, like those MMA guys, That's all like, they in do. the garage, like, TJ, yeah. <laughs> you know, it's like yeah, and then it all happened just a fucking whirlwind right away, so fast. Like I don't even I was I don't remember what I was doing, but I go back to my phone. It's just fucking messages after messages, wanting to do interviews and this. I'm like, nope, turn my fucking phone off. Yeah, you know, like, get away from it. <laughs> yeah, yeah. So this is my first my first uh, talking about dude, uh, retirement. You know, I love dude. your brother. I support you and appreciate it. Um, whatever you want to do, if you, a year from now you got shoulders f feeling froggy, let's run it back. Right. And then uh, otherwise, just keep building that empire, man, and doing. That's the plan. Thing. Being the best dad you can and, and fuck everybody else, dude. That's all you can do. That's all you can do. Yeah. That's my life model. Yeah, it's got to be a five-year-old. Yeah, has you know yeah. I mean? yeah. Just if you want some advice in life, just be a five-year-old. Yeah, be dude. a five-year-old. Forget everyone Shit else. Shit your pants when you see bubbles. <laughs> yeah. That's what my five-year-old does. But before we get you out of here, dude, we give every guest a pair of kicks. My boys at Oh, uh, no way. Oh, dude, we got to get you some kicks, dog. No way. That's How you retired, awesome. too? He's even got my size, ch children's five. They're size 17. <laughs> I'm like, oh, shit. No way, dude. But these are, uh, I mean, I can't give, you're legendary. Those are, Jordans are legendary. Dude. So this is fucking epic. You got it, here. brother. Yeah, man. I really so appreciate you it. Do. Yeah, you've been so supportive of me, man, and, you know. Fucking You're the, you're the guy, dude. And I'm, I'm proud of you, brother. I'm, I'm, you know, I'm excited that you retired, so I'm excited to see what you do next, man. Appreciate you know, it. Fighting as much as you did, that's a chapter, and that's one or two chapters in T.J. Dillashaw's book. I don't think athletes realize that. Like it's a small chapter. It doesn't define who TJ is. Yeah. You know, like now what you go on and do outside of this, like this is just, I mean, like how old are you? I'm um, 36. I'll be 37 February. Yeah, yeah. It's like, that's a short chapter, dude. It's like time to get going. It's now. hard to remind yourself of that shit, though, right? Because that's like all I've identified as, right? TJ Dillashaw, world champion. TJ Dillashaw, UFC world champion. It was like, that's what I built my businesses around, too. I mean, UFC's given me a great platform to build my name, and now I've built businesses off of it. Yep. But it's like, that's always what I identified as, right? And that's like the problem. Yeah. Like that's the problem, with, whether it's football, whatever it is. It's yeah. like they, they think that their identity of things just tied up with, I'm a fighter, I'm a fighter. I've never felt that way. Mm. So I went into business or po comedy or podcasting. I never felt that way. That's like, good. No, no, no. You guys label me that. Mm -hmm. I think I'm all this other stuff. Cool. You, that's fine if you want to say yeah. that. But I'm over here, man. Yeah. You know? I think you can do the same thing and bring that same passion, tenacity in the business world. And they better watch out, man. That fucking egg, dude. Yep. Appreciate oh, yeah. it, brother. My dude, best, I man. appreciate it. TJ Dillashaw, everybody. If you're into thick boys, <laughs> like, subscribe, comment, and God bless America. Well, that's not my big one. Get thick, thick, super thick, from my wallet to my check. I don't want it if it's skinny, but I need it if it's thick. Need a thick girl.